Hello and welcome to episode 202 of Level Up Your Career, 60 minutes of live Q&A where your questions drive the show. I'm Shanice Mitchell-Cox and I will be your host for today. If you're watching on YouTube, you can find out about what we do in our channel. So please give this video a like and subscribe to find out more about us. Adriana is joining in the social chat, so please let her know your name and the city from where you are joining from. She will post a link to vote up the questions that you would like answered the most, and of course, for you to add your own. If your question is selected, your name will appear in the credits at the end of the show. So get yours in early and stay with us to see that happen. Cybersecurity is one of the most vital functions in modern business and a trending career option in 2023. It's critical to safeguard digital assets, protect sensitive information and ensure the integrity and availability of systems. It plays a crucial role in ensuring business continuity whilst protecting individuals from cyber threats. But how do you become a NIST cybersecurity professional and where do you begin? To help us figure this out are our great panel, so let's jump straight in and meet them. We are joined by Mark Rovers. Mark Rovers is a trainer, coach, con consultant and president at Interprom. Mark specialises in business relationship management, service management, information security management and project and change management. He's looking forward to sharing his experience with you and answering your questions today. Welcome to Level Up, Mark. I do look forward to it indeed, uh, Shanice. Thanks for having me. Um, looking forward to some great questions that already have come in, by the way. i um, like to start, as usual, with a uh, quote I found from uh, Bruce Schneier this time. He once said, if you think technology can solve your security problems, then you don't understand the problems, and you don't understand the technology. Wonderful quote. I always love your quote, Smart, so thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> And sec our second panelist for today is Jacob Hill. Jacob is the Director of Cyber Operations and founder of GRCA Academy.io. Jacob has 15 years experience, holds a master's in cybersecurity, leading as Director of Cyber Operations at a defense contractor, and has developed a security and compliance program from the ground up. We are delighted that you can be here on Level Up today. Thank you for appearing on the panel, Jacob. Thank you so much. Excited to be here. Appreciate it. It's wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much. Our third panelist today is Mike Bastella. He is the president of Solution Cubed, who provide full lifecycle IT management and cybersecurity solutions in both commercial and federal markets. Passionate about career development, Mike spends his time helping people learn how to build adaptive cyber resilience. Welcome to Level Up, Mike. Thank you, Shanice. Happy to be here. Uh, happy to be with this panelist. I know it's going to be a great discussion and uh, looking forward to the questions. Wonderful. Thank you so much. It's great to have you here as always. And I'm delighted to welcome Kristen Nova. Kristen is a cybersecurity staff consultant with a skilled team at Solutions3 LLC, a recent Farley uh, Dickinson University computer science graduate and a former student amb ambassador and ACM president. She's experienced in leadership and education roles and is now leveraging her skills during a Solution3 LLC summer internship. Thank you for joining us on Level Up Your Career today, Kristen. Thank you. I'm excited to participate for the first time and I'm here to learn a little bit myself too. <laughs> Absolutely. It's always wonderful welcoming new panelists. It's great to have you here. And wrapping up our panel today is Faith Colo. Faith is a cybersecurity consultant where she leverages technical experience and analytical skills to enhance our information security practices and contributes to her success. Faith conducts comprehensive assessments of policies and standards, ensuring compliance. We're thrilled to have you on the show today, Faith. Thank you for having me on the show. And I'm looking forward to having this conversation about becoming a NIST professional and all the opportunities it creates. Thank you so much. And would our Level Up show be Level Up without our fantastic question master? And today our question master is Charlotte Miller who joins us from the lovely Thames Valley. How are you today, Charlotte? 
Good. Um, very well, thank you. Super excited about our brand new panellists um, here to answer some great questions from our panellists. Sorry, from our viewers, should I say. Um, we've got a live one already, so um, lots to get through, Shanice. Amazing. Let's take our first question. Thanks, Shanice. Our first question is from David Moses. Hmm. David asks, this event is about how. I want to know why. Why should I invest my time and money for this? What is in it for me and employers recently downsized after 10 years? What a great question, David. And I hope we can provide you some insight. Uh, Faith, do you want to kick us off with this one, please? Yes, uh, this is a very interesting question. Um, investing your time and money to become a NIST cybersecurity professional can offer several benefits for both you and potential employers, especially if you recently faced downsizing after a long career. Well, for you, I'll give you a breakdown of what it is in for you. The NIST uh, certification are globally um, recognized and respected. Obtaining such certification can make you more attractive to employ employers seeking professionals with a strong foundation in cybersecurity. Secondly, the NIST cybersecurity framework covers a broad spectrum of topics ranging from risk management to incident response, and it allows you to diversify your skill set, making you more versatile in the job market. Another thing about the NIST cybersecurity um, certification is that many organizations, including those outside the United States, adopt the NIST standards. And by becoming a NIST professional, you position yourself to work in industries that prioritize adherence to these standards. And for the employers, for the benefits for the employers, part, NIST uh, provides a robust framework for compliance and risk management. Employers can benefit from having professionals who understand and can implement these principles ensuring the organization's cybersecurity posture aligns with industry standards. It emphasizes a risk-based approach to cybersecurity. It prioritizes NIST cybersecurity practices that often gain a competitive advantage, making sure that every, the professionals on the team can contribute to maintaining its edge in the market. And it also provides guidelines for effective incident response, which will be used to handle and mitigate the impact of cybersecurity incidents. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Faith. That was an incredible answer. Uh, Mart, do you want to share some insight here? Most certainly. Thank you. Um, indeed, luck was already said in this first answer. Um, but yeah, if your organization downsizes, I hope they don't downsize in uh, cybersecurity because that would just be the, the wrong trend right there. And second, um, if you look for a, a career for, I mean, for the rest of your life, I mean, cybersecurity won't go away anytime soon. It will only increase in uh, need and demand for that. So um, in other words, uh, if this is your passion, if you feel this is something that uh, suits you well, uh, I definitely would high, uh, invest in it. Uh, in other words, uh, make it your career and not to mention it pays well. <laughs> great, great advantage there as well. Uh, Jacob, if you would like to share some insight here. Yes, thanks, Shanice. I would say from a business perspective, uh, there's more and more laws coming out, more and more regulation, um, as well as privacy laws. Uh, the UK obviously has their GDPR. Here in the United States, uh, our individual states are issuing uh, different privacy laws, as well as we have a federal law that is um, not, a, I wouldn't say is as good as the GDPR, um, but it will impact small businesses um, because the large businesses will flow down those requirements down to the uh, small businesses out there. So in the United States here, small businesses make a, a really large uh, portion of our workforce. And so the large businesses out there and the smalls all have to pay attention and address cybersecurity because it will impact the smalls, whether it's from a, a flow down contractual clause um, or just 
business impacts due to a ransomware event or you know whatever the case might be. So I agree, it's critical. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Mike, if you could jump in and share some answers. Yep. Absolutely. This is uh, this a great question. It, it uh, gets my brain going in 15 different directions. I have so much I want to say, but I'm going to keep it short. <laughs> I spent most of my career in technology, you know, tools for managing networks, tools for managing systems, databases, application, the service desk. We could go on and on, backup and recovery, software distribution. There's always, you know, it's a supply and demand kind of thing. And when you look at the technology and the tools, the supply is is great. There are so many vendors out there. And there's always another another tool, another application, you know, one one's uh, leapfrogging the other all the time. And typically as a uh, technologist and a and a consultant, you know, you you hit that uh, pain point, you help solve the problem, uh, you define a solution and then you spend most of your effort and time trying to sell it to the higher ups, trying to get the C levels and the folks that hold the purse strings to uh, understand what it is you're talking about and why it's needed. And uh, typically they see this is just another silver ball that the technologists are chasing. And you want to get into uh, uh, the demand side of things. So supply, lots of supply in the technology area. If you want to get into the demand side, uh, becoming a NIST cybersecurity professional uh, takes your discussion up to the C-level. You're now having executive business discussions and it's not about the technology and the implementation, but it's about a long-term relationship, helping them continue to do business to, de- to, to do business better, but to deliver business outcomes. And, and taking an organization from uh, Swiss cheese, <laughs> from a security perspective, to putting best practices in place and controls that you can measure, monitor, it puts a lot of value on the supply or the demand that's being being addressed. So it's a, it's a great role to be in. Wonderful, thank you so much, Mike. And Kristen, do you wanna finish us off on this question? Yeah, I feel like um, going off a little bit on what Mike had said, I feel like with having that, um, you know, having that specification in cybersecurity awareness and being a professional as a NIST, um, professional, you're able to kind of dive into that conversation about culture with cybersecurity, not just the tools and not just what software can we add on or bolt on to our company and what we're doing, but kind of interwinding or, you know, integrating that conversation about every action, every behavior, a person who is in cybersecurity should kind of take on. Um, and I think this would also allow you to outshine, you know, with your peers. Um, They see that if you have that specification or specialization in this uh, certification, you're able to kind of show what else you can contribute to the table. Absolutely. These have been great answers. And David, I hope you've taken some insight from these answers and they help you make your next career decision. Charlotte, can we take our next question, please? We can, Janice. We have some live questions from our viewers. The first one is from Tom Harter. Tom asks, there's lots of trainings that claim some relationship to NIST. What makes this one different? Oh, what a great question, Tom. We will start with, um, who would like to answer this? Mark, take it away. <laughs> Uh, what makes this one different is that um, what I personally liked about it the first time I saw it and also the part of, uh, as far as teaching it, is the uh, the organizational aspect of it. Um, it's not as in, let's go over the NIST standard and go over it line by line and uh, out of any questions, let's move on. <laughs> no, it's much more as in um, the... What does it mean, for example, to uh, adopt a standard like this for your organization? Uh, what would be a good approach to do this so it actually sticks and it's not just for the security people, a uh, security team? Um, so it has this organizational view, uh, which I particularly like about it. But there's more to it, and I'm sure there's other panelists that can add to this. Wonderful. That's great. Thanks so much, Mark. And Mike, if you'd like to jump in now. Sure. Uh, it's definitely true that there is a lot of NIST training out there. And as a matter of fact, in the 
the roles that, that we are all in, we've probably been through a lot of it, if not most of it. Uh, and, you know, the, the training that's out there is actually very good. Um, they say, you know, they talk about what the control is and why it's important. And then they go to the next control and they talk about what the control is and why it's important. Uh, no one's really talking about how do I operationalize that control? And, and, you know, it's really the fact that most folks that are getting involved in the, the NIST cybersecurity framework or risk management framework, and they're focused on the controls, it's because they have an audit coming up and they need to prepare for the audit. So they're thinking that desired state is passing the audit. And I think what we've seen in industry is that's not working so well. Uh, that's why so many organizations, high, highly visible organizations with large IT and cybersecurity staffs, large budgets are spending a ton of money. They're passing their audits and they're still getting wrecked. <clears throat> so, you know, what, what this training is about is understanding the controls, operationalizing the controls, wrapping continual service improvement around those controls. And desired state isn't passing the audit. That's getting, that's getting the organization to the starting point. So now they can iteratively continue to improve and produce the outcomes that the business needs to keep their organization and their data safe. That's what makes this different. And that's what makes it unique. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Mike and Mark. They were great answers. Thank you so much. And Charlotte, should we take our next question, please? You may, um, Shanice. We've got another question from a live viewer, Shannon Coley. Um, Conley, sorry. Uh, is it more beneficial to obtain a degree in cybersecurity or to complete a boot camp towards certifications? Oh, this is a great question, Shannon. Thank you so much. We'll start with Jacob and then Kristen. Sure. Yeah, it, this is my opinion. Um, and, and I'll just talk from my experience, my recent experience. Uh, there's a university here in the United States uh, called Western Governors University. And it actually, they put a bunch of certifications inside of their degree program. So I think that if you're able to find a university uh, that actually packages certification in and um, into the program and it's competency-based um, and, and actually for my master's degree, it took me uh, 15 days to accomplish that, which is um, amazing, you know? Uh, so I, uh, and that's not the normal experience, but what I love about WGU is that they actually package certifications inside of that. So I would say if you can get the degree and the certifications, um, that, that would be excellent. Uh, here in the United States, uh, if you work for government, they do have graduate, you know, uh, bachelor's degree requirements or whatever it might be. Sometimes you can get a waiver for that, but um, I would say that overall, I, I probably would I probably would put more value on certifications plus experience. And there's all kinds of great ways to get experience from home these days, even without a full time job. The platforms like Try Hack Me and uh, Server Academy, and you know all kinds of different ways to do it. So I hope that helps. Thank you so much, Jacob. That was great. And uh, Kristen, if you'd like to jump in. Yeah, I can't help but to agree with Jacob. Um, I just finished my bachelor's degree at Fairleigh Dickinson University. Um, and I feel that I needed that education plus the certification. So like he said, it comes with, you know, experience and certifications being a bonus. But I feel like, especially me, I work with the interns in our company. So I see things that maybe are lacking that they are not learning, you know, officially in school. And I try to blend that in with what they know to NIST, which is a whole different ballpark, especially when you're focusing a lot on technology. Talking about compliance can really like give you like a whole, wow, a whole new universe to think about. Um, so I think with the education in college or in school, you're able to be like, okay, I know what I want to focus on and I know what I'm going to need for that. So that's when you start picking out the certifications that you should seek. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Mark, if you'd like to jump in and provide some insight. I agree with everything that has been said so far. Um, I'd say the, your, your degree in cybersecurity should build that solid foundation and you build on top of that with other uh, certifications. And Shannon, um, 
the, well, there's news for you. You will never be done with learning in the cybersecurity space. That's just a vast and, and, and changing world. And the, the folks that have uh, different mindsets when it comes to that, um, they're always trying to stay ahead of you. So you want to stay uh, current and stay up to date. So this is a lifelong learning uh, career if you choose for a cybersecurity uh, career. So, um, yeah, keep learning. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Mark. And Faith, if you'd like to wrap us up on this question. Yeah, I feel like everyone has said everything, to be honest. But I think the choice between obtaining a degree in cybersecurity and completing a boot camp for certifications depends on the individual goals and preferences. A degree provides the comprehensive um, education covering theoretical and practical aspects offering a broader understanding of the field and potential for management roles. However, it requires a significant amount of time and financial investment. On the other hand, the um, boot camps offer a, an accelerated hands-on approach, focusing on practical skills and quick entry into the workforce. Um, they are both cost-effective and suitable for those seeking um, rapid skill acquisition and both paths can lead to successful careers or individuals should consider um, their career objective, their preferred learning style and time commitment when deciding between a degree and what's come for certifications. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Faith. That was a great answer. And Charlotte, can we take our next question, please? You certainly can, Shanice. We've got another live question, and the question is from Gwen Benson. Um, as a business analysis, what advice will you give to change careers to cybersecurity analyst? What are the gaps that I need to be aware of, and what do I need to do to fill the gaps? Oh, this is a great question. Thanks, Gwen. And it's nice to see you back on Level Up again. Uh, Jacob, if we could start with you, please. Sure. Hi, Gwen. Yes, I think going into a compliance role or governance risk and compliance role is a great place to start because uh, in that realm, there's all kinds of different experience uh, that you already have that you can bring into that role. And then what you have to do is you have to familiarize yourself with whatever framework the organization is is using, whether it's NIST cybersecurity framework, ISO, you know, whatever it is. Um, and the great thing about it too, is that the compliance frameworks, they have a lot of overlap and you just have to understand how they, uh, the differences, you know? So I, I think going into GRC is, is a great way to start. And uh, then you can become more technical over time and, uh, you know, provide more value to the business and, Make more money. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Always very good, isn't it? <laughs> Wonderful. And Faith, if you'd like to share some insight, please. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with Matt on um, starting with GRC, but also transitioning from a business analyst to a cybersecurity analyst involves bridging knowledge gaps in technical areas. I would suggest you start by gaining foundational understanding of networking, operation operating systems and security concepts. Um, familiarize yourself with cybersecurity frameworks like NIST and explore um, relevant tools and technologies. Also uh, acquire the NIST cybersecurity professional certification to be able to validate your cybersecurity knowledge, leverage your analytical skills from business um, analyst for risk assessment and incident response in cybersecurity, and also engage with cybersecurity community through forums and networking events to build connections and stay updated on industry um, trends. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And Mike, do you want to finish this question off? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a great one. And uh, the panelists great, gave some great advice, but um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of drill it home. Make the move, <laughs> make the move. Uh, and here's why, why I say that. There are a lot of technologists that really struggle having a business conversation. A business analyst already has those skills. A business analyst already has the, the analytical piece of it. And, and now you're just taking it and applying it to a different sector. 
so yeah, there's some there's some uh, cyber makeup that will, will need to be done, but the but the skills, the interrelational skills, the business skills, the analytical skills, they're all there already. So I think it uh, makes a lot of sense if that's the direction you want to go in. Wonderful, thank you so much. Oh, Jacob, do you want to jump back in and add some comments? Yeah, uh, just real quick. I spoke with a military veteran who was in aviation maintenance, so probably you know turning wrenches and working on aircraft. And he transitioned in, into over over into GRC. And he, from what he told me, it one, it's intimidating, but just do it. Just do it. As Mike said, it'll it'll be worth it. Perfect. Sometimes now is better than ever, isn't it? So just, yeah, just do it, Gwen. We believe in you. <laughs> and uh, we're just going to jump over to socials right now and welcome some of our audience. Um, so let's say hello to Shannon. I saw Shannon pop up there. And uh, we've got Bina in the audience, which as Charlotte's responded back to. Lovely to see Bina here. And do we have any more of you in the audience? Hi, Shannon Conley. We loved your first question. So if you have any questions, let's not leave them till the last 10 minutes. Get your questions in early and our panellists will provide you some great insights into how to become a NIST cybersecurity professional. Charlotte, shall we take our next question before we say hello to Ashley? <laughs> Hi, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can, Shanice. Um, the next question is from um, an anonymous person. They ask, is NIST of any re relevance outside of America? What does it mean to be NIST cybersecurity professional? What is it and why should I consider it? Well, anonymous viewer, I see you trying to sneak four questions in there. How very cheeky. <laughs> but we will try our best to answer them as best as we can. So, panellists. Let's jump to Mark first. Is it of relevance outside of America? Absolutely. Um, I mean, security, there's a lot of common things that we face uh, across the world and having a framework uh, that is actually uh, uh, I mean, it's neutral. I mean, it's independent of uh, which country that you're in. I mean, the standard happens to be one that originated in the, U in the US, but it doesn't mean it's only applicable in the US, just like an ISO standard. You know, it's published in Switzerland. That doesn't mean that only the Swiss people can benefit from it. So, in other words, uh, for sure, it's something that uh, is applicable across the uh, across the globe. Uh, and again, as I said earlier, it's unique in its uh, way that the um, uh, the the course is set up, uh, the program is set up, that it uh, spends a lot of time on how to apply uh, the the standard to your organization. Because again, there's a difference between what the standard puts forward and how it may work in your organization. And of course, that's, that's uh, the biggest challenge as in, it's good, good to know all these things, but how to make it work in your organization. And that is applicable for any organization, large, mid-size, small, across the globe. Wonderful, thank you so much, Mark. Mike, if you'd like to provide some answers here. Sure, absolutely. Uh, it, is, it is definitely global. Um, best practices are best practices. And uh, matter of fact, I would say that the UK and Europe are actually further ahead of us, especially the UK, further ahead of the, uh, the US in terms of uh, not, not just adopting uh, the, the cybersecurity framework, but actually adapting it to the environment and, and using it on a regular basis. So um, it kind of reminds me of ITO. You know, it's, it started in the UK and, and it swept across the globe. You know, and uh, we're seeing the same kind of thing. And we're also seeing a number of existing standards adopting the NIST cybersecurity framework and then adding the, 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 few, the handful of controls and practices that make it unique for that particular industry. We're seeing it with NERC. We've seen it with ISO. Uh, so it really is something that the, the global community is accepting and, and, and adopting. Wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Faith. Yeah. Yes, the NIST. Uh, sorry, yes, NIST has relevance outside the United States. It is known for developing and promoting standards and best practices, particularly in the field of cybersecurity. It is widely recognized and adopted globally 
as a valuable set of guidelines for improving cybersecurity risk management. Now, being a NIST cybersecurity professional means having expertise in implementing and managing cybersecurity practices aligned with NIST standards. And reasons I believe you should consider being a NIST cybersecurity professional is it is designed to be flexible and adaptable to different organizational structures and industries. It means you can apply your skills in diverse settings. It provides um, a framework that helps organizations comply with various cybersecurity regulations and standards. And it provides a comprehensive framework and set of best practices that will be used in making you valuable in various industries and sectors. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Faith. And Kristen, would you like to finish this question off? Yeah, so NIST is the National Institute of Standards and Technology. So they've actually been in charge of putting out standards, frameworks, guidelines for a very, very long time, um, even before the use of computers were even existing. Um, I think the importance of being a NIST cybersecurity professional is, again, like what I mentioned before, it's what you're contributing to the conversation and change in terms of this ever advancing field. Um, every day we're getting a brand new threat to add to the threat landscape. And if we're able to prepare ourselves in terms of strategy, um, in terms of, you know, recovering and kind of building our company to take that impact a little bit differently, we are, you know, supporting the cause in terms of bettering our cybersecurity posture. So yes, I do think you should consider it. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And as Love actually says, let's move the love and NIST is actually all around. So uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, you know, listen to the panelists and engage in all of the trends that are happening outside of your local region as well, because it keeps you up to date with what's happening around the world. Charlotte, can we take our next question, please? Thank you. We've really got our audience engaged today, Shanice. I've got another question, <laughs> live question from Tom Harter. Mike mentioned the business skills are already a part of the business analyst background. Can someone please explain how this fits into this training? So shall we go to the man himself? Mike, would you like to provide some answers to this question? <laughs> yeah, I figure if somebody's calling me out on it, I better jump in. <laughs> so uh, if, we're, if we're talking, now remember, uh, I'm hearing how it fits into this training. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, there's a lot of training out there on the NIST cybersecurity framework. And I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. Here's what the control is. Here's why it's important. Doesn't, doesn't provide that business lens. Uh, uh, through the training. If we're talking about the NIST cybersecurity professional training coming out of the DVMS Institute, that's where uh, we're really taking that training and we're incorporating the business discussions, the business culture, the processes and procedures or the, or the practices. So uh, in the training coming out of the DVMS Institute of which uh, all of us here are, are involved in and, and big fans of, uh, not only are you learning about the controls and the importance of the controls, but as Mark said, you're not going through uh, control by control by control. It's giving you a sense of how do I approach a control? How do I look at the objectives associated with that control and understand what I have within my environment? How am I operationalizing those controls and how am I incorporating it across organizations, departments, agencies? And it is a a business level discussion or a mission level discussion on the Fed, on the uh, government side. So I just want to uh, encourage you uh, going back uh, what was talked about before, you know, security analyst, business analyst. Look, I don't, I don't care what uh, position in cybersecurity you would like to hold. If you want to be a security analyst, a threat hunter, an incident response hunter, understanding the NIST cybersecurity framework, the controls associated with that framework, how you go about operationalizing those controls and how you measure the performance and, 
and put uh, understand the practices to improve, it's going to make you a better incident responder. It's going to make you a better threat hunter. It's going to make you a better analyst. So no matter what position within cybersecurity, this, this training is phenomenal in the sense that it uncovers the things that you should know about when you're putting your design in place. So you're really designing with security in mind. I hope that I hope that answers the question. Thank you so much. And Mark, would you like to add some comments to this? A lot. That's a great answer, uh, Mike. Thank you. And the uh, the only thing I can add to that is that um, as a as a BA, you know the organization, you know their processes, you also know the people. And as we all know, that's the weakest link in the whole uh, cybersecurity challenge that we're dealing with. Um, in other words, that's uh, already an advantage if you have that knowledge uh, and show up in the cybersecurity world with all that in your back pocket. Um, what uh, this framework does uh, is that it um, makes it easier for you to apply, as in where does this work and how should this work in the organization? Um, and again, uh, like Mike said, this organizational aspect, knowing the processes of the organization, knowing what, where this fits in. Um, and and, and I, I, again, I keep repeating uh, what Mike said earlier, please jump in with your knowledge of your uh, with your background, you're uniquely positioned amongst many uh, cybersecurity specialists, uh, since that's often the missing piece when it's about cybersecurity. And again, you show up well prepared that way. Wonderful, thanks so much, Ma. And Faith, would you like to finish this question? Yes, I believe uh, Mike and um, Mike has already identified everything, but I kind of want to give like a breakdown on this. So there are five core concepts in NEST, which is the identify, protect, detect, and respond. So in the identify state, you can apply your similar skills to identify and characterize critical assets and risk in your organization, being a business analyst. You can use your expertise in business processes and contribute to developing and implementing mm -hmm. security controls, which ensures the protection of mechanisms which align with business operations in your own organization and your analytical skills sorry from your ba uh, background are crucial in the detect phase where you can identify anomalies and potential security incidents through monitoring and analysis and for the response phase you can use your skills to translate well to the response phase by aiding the swift and effective response to cybersecurity incidents and contributes to the development of business continuity and recovery and recovery plans, which is something the NIST cybersecurity practitioner um, exam teaches, sorry, certification teaches you, and you can align them with the organization's broader um, business goals. That's basically what I, I have to add. That was amazing. Thanks so much for that breakdown. Mm -hmm. And Tom, I hope you enjoyed that answer because I certainly did. So Charlotte, shall we take our next question? Thanks, uh, Shanice. We've got a, a question from one of our panellists, from Mike. Mike asks, what motivated the, ma ma the panellists to level up to a NIST cybersecurity professional? Oh, this is a great question, Mike. The use of level up is very good as well. <laughs> Who would like to answer this or shall we go round and we will provide something? We'll start with Mark. Uh, for me, it was the um, that bridge that the uh, framework provides us with uh, between the technology and the organization. Uh, organizations. Um, you know, having dealt with uh, many of these frameworks and whereas uh, plenty of them that focus on just a bunch of controls, which is very important, don't get me wrong, but then missing out on is how, how do I make this work in my organization? Um, that to me was the intriguing part that got me motivated to uh, jump into this and uh, know all about it. Since that's to me the, the most exciting part actually to make, to make it work in organizations, in organizations and to see it coming to fruition. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Kristen. Yeah, I feel like I was just having this conversation with Mike uh, this week um, that 
I felt like I hadn't had that knowledge previously about what a lot of the criteria that's in the course itself. Um, there's a lot of analytical thinking in terms of business that I wasn't exposed to before. And I think I feel like I've become the teacher from being a student. <laughs> I feel like I, I can completely understand the process way more in depth than I did before, especially with understanding functions and understanding the way that we can strategize to better, you know, the culture of the company in terms of cybersecurity, um, understanding that there's certain processes or I guess you can say like methods of doing things that have better ways to do them. And I think I learned how to do that a lot more. And now I feel like I internalized it. So, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Kristen. And Jacob? Yes, I think what motivates me is learning about something that is so ubiquitous, uh, you know, throughout the throughout the world, actually, in the cybersecurity framework. It's, uh, it, it's very interesting. And, and so for me as a defense contractor, NIST CSF is, is actually new. Um, we have been focused in on uh, NIST 853 security controls and risk management framework. Uh, but what's interesting is that uh, the our defense department uh, said they're going to release a strategy here pretty soon for the defense industrial base for defense contractors, and it will deal with NIST cybersecurity framework. So, uh, folks, if you're in the RDOD, uh, get ready. I would, you know, take our training. It's great. So. Mm -hmm. It's happening. <laughs> Wonderful. And Faith, would you like to jump in and provide some answers? Yeah, definitely. Um, honestly, for me, was the desire to enhance my skills in risk management, which aligns with recognized standards and be able to contribute effectively to organizational um, cybersecurity postures. Additionally, I would say my commitment to staying ahead of cyber threats, which fosters a deeper understanding of security frameworks and contributing mm -hmm. meaningfully to organizational cybersecurity um, strategies, which can be used as a key driver in in this field. So that's basically the reason why. Thank yeah. you so much. And uh, Mike, shall, do you want to finish this question off, please? Uh, absolutely. Um, Two, two major uh, influences for me. Uh, like Matt, Mark, uh, I grew up in IT service management, service desk, the ITIL processes. And um, it, it wasn't, it, it, was, it was a great run. Uh, it was, we were doing a lot of great things, but it wasn't um, fulfilling all of the different areas. And we, and we saw a real softening. And so I was looking to make a, a move into cybersecurity and it just seemed like this was the, the right direction and uh, it was a good fit. And, and the reason I even wanted to share that is I know that there's a lot of ITIL practitioners out there that are experiencing or have experienced the same thing. So my call to you is get involved in this side. It's a good fit for those that understand IT processes and practices and and uh, there's a good fit there. The second one was as a as a federal contractor here in the U.S., uh, the the uh, NIST 800-171 requirement uh, that Jacob was uh, referring to, uh, it became a mandate, uh, and it's a very serious mandate for a federal contractor. If we don't uh, if we don't go through the assessment and submit our scores and do all sorts of other things that I won't bore you with. Uh, we may not get the contract. We may not get the option year renewal. We may, may not be able to join a, a, a team with a large prime contractor. So it's having a significant uh, business impact or, or organizational impact. And when I look at when I looked at the dollars that consulting companies wanted to charge to come in and do that assessment, you know, I kind of said to myself, to be quite frank, I said, you know, I'm not the brightest guy, but I think I can pick this up. And so that whole decision was happening right around the same time that I was saying, you know, we really need to make a pivot. And uh, it just seemed like a natural fit. And, and it truly was. And again, uh, uh, appealing to my 
my ITO counterparts out there, this is a, a great area to move into where you can take all those skills you've developed out for all those years and, and put it to use in a, in a, in a broader, um, highly visible area. Fantastic. Thank you so much for those answers, panelists. It was great. We've got time for maybe one or two more questions. So, Charlotte, can we have our next question, please? Uh, thanks, Shanice. We've got another question from one of our panelists, um, Kirsten. Um, how does one prepare and study efficiently for the NCSP training certification exam? Ooh, what a great question. Who would like to answer this or shall we go to Kristen herself? <laughs> you would like to answer I think so. it. <laughs> Kristen, take yeah, it away. Um, so I, when I was studying for it, I kept thinking, hmm, is it like in college where I have to really study for the test or am I studying for the criteria? And I realized that I'm not going to internalize any of it if I don't really take into account what the criteria is, right? What the, what the guidelines are offering and understanding, adopting, and adapting frameworks. And so I actually created a study session with other interns. Um, and I basically put together kind of like a brainstorming, answering kind of study session. And we basically went over what we think the answers are and why. So we rationalized our answers, we shared our thoughts, and then we got to the right answer, which can be provided in some of the boot camps. And I realized, hmm, as we're discussing it, like it's a conversation, like it's an exercise, we're able to actually get the answers a lot more easier than we thought we did. Um, so I think a lot of it has to do with, think of it as a real life scenario. Don't make it so textbooky. Um, try to apply it to a real life, uh, you know, concern or something that actually can happen within a company. So, yeah, I think, I think that's so. my question. Fantastic. And do you think working and studying with others helped you uh, retain that knowledge a little bit more? Oh, yeah, definitely. You Amazing. know, more, more brains together, <clears throat> uh, more, you know, more help and you get to understand different perspectives that way. So yeah, that, that definitely helps. Wonderful, thank you so much. And Mike, do you wanna jump in? That would be great. Yeah, I just want to um, thank Kristen because uh, that, was, that was a great response. And, and uh, I, I got to witness all of that uh, on the fringe of, as it was going on. And um, so she led a group of interns and, and right now, three out of the four interns got their uh, NCSP certification, and the fourth has only put it off because of some family uh, situations, and he is committed to get it done before the end of the year or over Thanksgiving weekend. So, uh, but, but, you know, the, the other thing um, that, that I typically tell my students is go through the material once, just listen to it, don't take notes, don't just listen to it. You know, second time, listen to it and take notes. Third time, listen to it and, f and, and read your notes as you're going through it and fill in any gaps that you may have missed the first two times. And uh, that, that just seems to be a way. So the way the course is set up, especially the self-paced course, you take a module, you have a knowledge check that you have to get, you know, a certain percentage of correct, and then you go to the next module. So that methodology I'm, I'm talking about is, uh, you know, do it on chapter and then rinse and repeat, do it the next chapter, rinse, repeat. And so kind of taking that technique and combining it with a, a group session. And I always encourage, especially as I'm talking to organizations and whatnot, you can do it on your own. There's no problem doing it on your own, but if you can do it with a group, and you commit to each other and you're accountable to each other. This week, we're doing this module. This week, we're doing that module. And then go into what Kristen said, get together as a group, share ideas, best practices. It really reinforces so that it's not a memorization thing. It's, an, it's a knowledge thing. It becomes part of your DNA. And that's just how you, you evaluate. Absolutely. Learning is always done better when you're together with someone else. So Great answers, Kristen and Mike. Thank you so much. Charlotte, shall we take our next question, please? 
You may. Um, we've got a question from one of our viewers, Shannon Conley. Do you think that universities should dedicate a course solely on learning and understanding the NIST cybersecurity framework? Look at all those nods. Let's go to Kristen, first of all, uh, to provide some insight on this question. Yeah, I'm a huge advocate for learning this in college because I probably remember hearing the word NIST twice in my four years in college. And it wasn't really in depth and it was more of like trying to mention it, but not go into detail about what compliance was, which is why I didn't even know that this part of cybersecurity existed until my internship. Um, I didn't know that there was things that involved business and cybersecurity and uh, you take all those technical things and you can actually make it a conversation about awareness and uh, culture. So. I think, yeah, there should definitely be more dedication to that here, at least in the US, um, but definitely all over as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Kristen. And Mike, if we could take some insight from you. Uh, yeah, I, I feel uh, very strongly about this one. Um, and I am working with a, a number of universities uh, to take a closer look at having this as part of their curriculum, their continuing uh, education, their workforce development programs. But, but let me put it in perspective. Um, in the U.S. here, the Obama administration, uh, you know, launched NIST through executive order to, you know, create this, this thing called the NIST cybersecurity framework. In May of 2021, another executive order came out from the Biden administration uh, to really solidify the the, um, uh, the security uh, infrastructure of the United States and the organizations and whatnot, and that's where a lot of these you know th this hype is coming. And um, you know, thirty seven times uh, DHS CISA, which is the security arm of Department of Homeland Security, said DHS CISA will DHS CISA will will do this, DHS CISA will do that. Twenty one times in that executive order, they said the director of NIST will. Director of NIST will do this, will do that. <clears throat> so you've got, you, you know that DHS CIS is on the hook for executing the executive order, and you know it's going to be heavily based on the NIST cybersecurity framework, the risk management framework, and the 800 series of informative references. We know that. That's a given. So if we know that, and that's what industry has to adhere to and, and, and adopt, why wouldn't the universities put that as a high priority to have students come out of a program understanding what the NIST cybersecurity framework is. And I can tell you that the first question I ask when, when I have a, a, a group of interns and we're starting off, you know, our first meeting, I always ask, what do you know about the NIST cybersecurity framework? And as Christian mentioned, you know, uh, I, I heard of it. We talked about it a little bit, or, or maybe I'll get, you know, well, I remember there's identify, protect, detect, recover, respond, re respond, recover, something like that. If that's all they're coming out with knowing, they don't know anything about it. And yet it has become such an important part of the cybersecurity picture. And uh, I think that uh, universities are beginning to see it. And, and I will also tell you, uh, being on a contract where there, you know, there's a 650 headcount, I'm, do, I'm doing a lot of reviewing job, re job requirements and job descriptions. And more and more and more, I'm seeing a requirement for an understanding of the NIST cybersecurity framework, the NIST risk management framework, 853, 800-128. Uh, you know, so there's, there's this requirement out there that we really need to get universities to see that having that as part of a, 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 a master's program or, you know, you talk about should there be a course? I think there should be a semester, <laughs> you know, more than one course for sure. Because there's so much in there and there's so much value. And the truth is, in a cybersecurity program, I'll go back to what I mentioned before. If you understand the NIST, CSF, RMF, you're going to be a better cybersecurity professional no matter what area you go into. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Mike. That was so insightful. Mark, would you like to wrap us up on our last question for today? Most certainly. I'll keep it short. Indeed, per Mike's uh, recommendation, there shouldn't be a whole semester. Um, because if the university's uh, objective is to prepare the, the graduates for the real world, then expose them to the real world. And then the NIST is just one example of what's out there. But there's a whole list of um, 
standards that are being and, and frameworks that are being used uh, in the industry or by uh, organizations around the globe. In other words, expose them to it and make them familiar with it. And if they get a certificate uh, in the NEST um, cybersecurity professional space, uh, even better. But um, prepare them, please, for the real world and what's what's out there instead of uh, just uh, uh, being book smart, right? Make them sp- street smart as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mark. And I'd like to thank our producers for your excellent questions today. Great job. And watch out for your name in the credits if your question was selected. Panel, it's time for your closing remarks. So let me begin with Mark. How was your experience today on Level Up, Mark? I think another informative session for everyone listening. Um, great answers from all the panelists, uh, as, as was uh, to be expected given uh, the caliber of uh, the panelists. Um, I'd like to finish with a, a quote from uh, Robbie Sinclair, who once said, security is always excessive until it's not enough, which uh, led me to this uh, cartoon where this person is applying for a position and says, here's my resume. It's encoded, it's encrypted, and it's shredded. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much, Mark, for appearing on Level Up today. Jacob, uh, how was your experience today? Yeah, yeah, it was great. It was great. Really appreciate you, Shanice, and uh, Charlotte, and the, and the rest of the panelists. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. And for our viewers, if uh, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. I would love to make a, that connection and uh, just have further conversations. Absolutely. Thank you so much. We do accept connections as long as you're not trying to sell us anything. So connect with us, but don't sell us anything. Great point. <laughs> and Mike, <laughs> Mike, how was your experience today on Level Up? Uh, always great. Um, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm so proud of uh, Faith and Kristen and seeing where, you know, where they came from being an intern to being a cybersecurity professional and, and then being on an international program like this. It's outstanding. Uh, but, it, but it, you know, there's one one point I just feel like I want to make. Uh, it's been haunting me since the question was asked, you know, do I do the boot camp or do I do the, the cybersecurity degree? Um, circling back on that, when you go through a degree program, it's just kind of thinking about this as we just had our last question. You're getting, you're touching all these different areas, right? So it's good to get that breadth. When you do a boot camp, you're doing a drill down in a specific topic. So you're beginning to specialize. So keep that in mind. That combination is a good combination. And thank you so much for having me. I always enjoy the, these programs. Thank you. It's always so lovely to have you, Mike. So thank you so much. And Kristen, your first appearance on Level Up. Thank you so much for the insight today. How was your experience? It was amazing. Uh, thank you, Jacob, Mark, Mike, for giving Faith and I a little bit more to think about, too. It's never, you never stop learning, right? So Thank you guys for uh, letting us join on. No problem at all. It was great to have you here and we will be welcoming you back anytime soon. (laughs) And Faith, how was your experience today on Level Up? Oh God, this this was a great show to be honest. The panelists provided great insights and thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. Hopefully I was able to provide valuable information and one thing you should not a cybersecurity is an ever evolving field. And if you need any further information, you need to talk about more things, you need to connect, please connect with me and I'll be able to answer, I'll be more than happy to answer questions and help you grow as a NIST cybersecurity professional. So thank you so much. Thank you, Faith. Your All of your insight today was priceless. So thank you, all of you. And Charlotte, what a great show, another great show in the bag today. <laughs> Yes, episode 202. Thank you so much to our panellists and an even bigger thank you to our viewers because we couldn't have delivered this show without you and your questions because it's your questions drive the show. Um, just a, a note to this time of year from, from me, um, Mike Mart, I have a quote and it's just, we will remember them. Mm. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Charlotte. And well done to everyone today. It was a great show. And yeah, over on our website, you can search for over 2000 questions, a free resource connecting you with experts from all around the world. 
Don't forget, we also have Level Up Your Career as a podcast on your preferred podcast platform. Just search APMG Level Up Your Career and you'll find us just there. And in the next couple of weeks, we have some fantastic events coming up. On Monday, the 13th of November, we will be discussing how to become a change manager. And on Wednesday, the 15th of November, we have got five expert panellists to discuss Praxis Framework and how it can help you, your team and your organisation. On Friday, the 17th of November, we will be exploring how to become an agile change leader. Thank you for joining us today. If please like and subscribe and share this video with your network. If you would like to join as a panelist, you can sign up through our link that we're going to post in the chat now and level up your career with APMG. Thanks everyone. See you on the next show.